Uh, hello, everyone. I wanted to do a quick video discussing the fifth essay. Um, let me just read it aloud. In light of the last three readings, Gustafson, Lewis, and Schultz, does religious faith in immortality, in your opinion, make the death of a loved one any easier than it is if we have no such faith? Why or why not? Well, that's a rather loaded question, I have to admit, right away. Um, and uh, I have some things I want to say about my wording, but I should say, first of all, for clarity's sake, that, that is a question that is inspired by C.S. Lewis's book, A Grief Observed. That is, I would have never thought of that question were it not for my reading of, of that particular book. And I don't think that I really need to explain that in any detail. Um, it is something that was discussed in the videos for the book and in the live session. But I think it's a real question um, that we can legitimately ask when we read that book, whether Lewis's religious faith um, has made his grief an easier process than it would have been if he had no such faith. Um, I think it's an interesting question to ask of that book, of that particular account of one person's grief. Uh, so I just want to let you know, I am thinking of C.S. Lewis there, um, particularly in, in that question. And, and, and if you've read the book, then you know that it's not easy to ask, to answer that question. I think, I mean, uh, if we look at the book as a whole, I'm sure that we get an indication of, of, of perhaps of how to answer that question, but it's, it's really not clear um, at all to me what the answer really is. Uh, let me go back to the, the actual wording of this assignment, which is a little, a little complex or tortured actually, uh, the, the, the language here. So in, in light of the last three readings, that is an invitation for you to consider all, all three of the readings in your response to this uh, without requiring that you um, necessarily discuss any one of them. As long as you discuss some of them, that's fine. Uh, as I said, my question was inspired by C.S. Lewis's A Grief Observed um, so it may be unavoidable, actually, to discuss Lewis uh, in this uh, essay. But if, if you find that the question does make sense to you, and, and it makes sense to you primarily in terms of what Gustafson and Schultz were saying without discussing Lewis, then feel free to go ahead. There's no requirement that you discuss C.S. Lewis. I just wanted to be clear that I was thinking of C.S. Lewis when I formulated the question. In light of the last three readings, well, I mean, if we look at Gustafson's account um, and we also look at Schultz's uh, essay, those are essays, well, Gustafson's essay is obviously about grief and it contains no real religious uh, element at all. Um, and it describes uh, the state of grief. Um, and it is, I think, a particularly good essay to compare with Lewis because uh, Gustafson's uh, theory of grief is uh, uh, academic. It, it is a, um, a theory, whereas Lewis is actually living through grief and telling us what it's like, what his thought processes are, what his emotional state is. So it, you know, it would be interesting if Lewis actually reflected in real life what Gustafson was talking about theoretically. And it would also be interesting if Lewis didn't, right? Because again, Gustafson's definition of grief is a theory which could be wrong. Uh, Schultz is a really a different matter, I would say. Schultz obviously is not uh, concentrating on grief, but he's concentrating on a related subject. And I think that is, is, how, that is how we think of the dead. Uh, and also doing it from a position that is totally uh, non-religious, as a secular position. Um, as you'll see, what Schultz thinks that he's doing is more or less summing up or reflecting what the consensus is about, about death uh, at his time in his culture, and that is certainly a one that does not allow for the afterlife. 
Uh, it is not a religious conception. Uh, yet it is uh, interested in how we think of the dead, you know, how, and how we think of ourselves as creatures that will die. So it may be that the Schultz approach is different enough from the, the, the really kind of obvious common theme of Gustafson and Lewis that you, you, you feel free to not include Schultz in your discussion. I, I, I think that he is uh, in similar territory uh, with uh, Gustafson and Lewis, but it may not be uh, a direct connection. So again, uh, the, the assignment says in light of the last three readings, which basically asks you to make use of these readings without really requiring that you do it in any particular way or that you discuss all three or that you, you, you can not, you, you don't have to discuss all three. I just thought that Schultz might have something to add to the discussion because his essay is relevant enough to the kind of issues that are raised by Gustafson and Lewis, but again, feel free not to include Schultz. And, and finally, just, you know, what is the question here? Uh, just to be clear, um, there's, a, there's something called grief that happens when someone that is close to us dies, let's say. Some of us have religious faith, and, and, and including in that, included in that religious faith is a belief in, in, in the immortality of the soul or an afterlife or survival, however you want to put it. Um, some of us do not have such a, a faith, in, and some of us do not believe in an immortality or an afterlife. But my question is, um, looked at, you know, uh, in, a, in a, let's say, a detached way, um, does religious faith in immortality actually, in your opinion, obviously, uh, drawing upon what you've read, but in your opinion, does it actually make the uh, grieving process the death of a loved one any easier? Uh, and it, you know, why or why not is, of course, the important thing that you always have to put in, even though, it, even though why or why not is such a cliche, I can tell you from a teacher's point of view and in, in, in asking questions, but you always have to put that in there because, of course, I don't know the answer to the question. If you say yes, uh, I'm perfectly willing to believe that's true. If you say no, then I'm perfectly willing to believe that's true. I, I'm not grading you on, on whether you say yes or no. I'm grading you on the quality of your response. And, and that's kind of all in the why or why not. That is the arguments and reasons that you offer in support of whatever position you take. So I hope that was of some help. If you have any specific questions, please feel to contact me.